right, so I got a lot of questions about growth hormone uh, in the last week or so and how it relates to testosterone and of course intermittent fasting. You know, some people have read some information about intermittent fasting and growth hormone and there's some like old ass studies about it and I even made videos about it three, four years ago when I first started extended fasting and 48 hour fasting. So let's get into this topic in this video. Does intermittent fasting actually relate to growth hormone and how does that relate to testosterone? So again, I have all my notes written here. So if I'm looking down, I'm just making sure I cover everything. Now, the two studies I want to cover first. There's a 2009 study in the journal Aging Cell. It's, it's a mouse study. And essentially, what they find is um, whatever intermittent fasting, it's an intermittent fasting study. They, they, you, know, you can make animals do intermittent fasting too, obviously. So whatever benefits are supposed to happen for the mouse during the intermittent fast, if they silence the growth hormone gene in the mouse, because you can silence genes in, in mice, right? You can, there's all these genes for different hormones and different uh, molecules, different enzymes. You can silence these genes, like chemically. So they silence the growth hormone gene in the mouse and the mouse, the, the benefit the mouse usually got from intermittent fasting, for example, living longer, you know, the caloric restriction, the, the fat loss and so on, that goes away. So that 2009 study provided evidence that for intermittent fasting to work, the growth hormone gene has to be there. So we know growth hormone is related somehow to intermittent fasting. So that's maybe where all these questions come in. Now, uh, one thing I want to cover is insulin. A lot of questions about insulin too and, and how, how this relates to this. So Growth hormone and insulin are both anabolic hormones, right? They promote muscle growth in the body. They, they allow you to become bigger. It's a mass thing. It's anabolic. Whereas catabolic is things that cut, you know, when you cut weight, you're on a catabolic system. You're in a catabolic regimen, okay? So what happens in our bodies when our metabolism breaks down, when you're living in an unhealthy, dumb life, you become insulin resistant. What does that mean? For the carbohydrates that you eat, the food that you eat to be used as energy, glucose has to be transported into the cell, right? There's all these glucose transporters outside the cell. Glucose has to be taken in to the cell to be used. If that doesn't happen, you're insulin resistant because insulin allows that process to happen. So if all these insulin is being secreted but your glucose is not being taken inside the cell, either you have some sort of insulin problem or you have a problem with the glucose transporters and they could both be involved. So that's what happens in diabetes and, and, and these types of diseases of blood sugar. You know, it's like, oh, I have a lot of blood sugar. Why? Because that sugar, glucose, is in your blood. It's not being taken inside the cell. Okay, so this is theory that you need to know when you read these papers. Now, let's, for those of you who don't know what the fuck intermittent fasting is, let's get into that next. Intermittent fasting is very, it's, it's, a, it's varied, it's very varied, it's diverse. You can do a 16-8, this is the normal fast, you don't eat for 16 hours and then you have an 8 hour window when you can eat. During the other 16 hours you can, I don't know, drink coffee, drink water, drink tea, but no calories. Okay, so, you know, water, tea, coffee is like one or two calories, these things, not water, but coffee and tea, that's okay. As long as you're below a certain very small caloric level, you're fasting. That's intermittent fasting. Now, there's another type of intermittent fasting where you eat for five days and then you fast for 48 hours every week. I used to do that when I was in strength camp a few years ago. I did it for about four or five months. That's also intermittent fasting. So it just depends. Some people do 24. So 20 hours fast and then they eat for four hours. Some people do OMAD, one meal a day. They just eat you know, in a span of half an hour to an hour and then for the rest of the 23 hours they fast. So there's different types of intermittent fasting. The one I do is usually 16-8 or 18-6. This is what I've been doing for the last four or five years. Now, when it comes to testosterone, there is not a single study out there that shows evidence, hardcore evidence, that intermittent fasting will boost testosterone. No, sir. This is a fad. I've, t I've said this in other videos before. If you know of any study like that, even in an animal, <laughs> tell me. Because there's a couple of studies actually show that 
intermittent fasting can lower testosterone. And again, these are animal studies, so you know, you don't take it with a grain of salt, and, and it's not like very well done, the controls and so on, because it's hard to control stuff like this. But um, fasting goes back, you know, 5,000 years, like 10,000 years, 50,000, a million, I don't know. It goes back a long time because fasting is something that the body is naturally used to because we're not supposed to eat five times a day. We, we didn't eat this ever, right? The obesity you see, the, the fat people in America, Canada, and even in Europe now, not so much in here in Ukraine, but there's a lot of fat people in the world. Even in India now, more people are dying because of overweight than underweight. This is crazy, it's crazy. In Africa, some countries, this is happening too. It's crazy how the world is like overabundance of food. It's not good. And that's where the fasting comes in. Um, Okay, so that, that's something I want to cover. Next, I also want to cover that extended fasting is very different from intermittent fasting, right? So in the Afrobeat Academy, we have Simon who fasted 10 days, Andre fasted seven days, um, I fasted five days twice before, um, other people have done some crazy fast in the Af Afrobeat Academy. So the benefits that you see are more, for me, my personal story I can tell you is more mental. Yeah, you get the six pack abs, you know, third or fourth day, like you won't even have to flex, like eight pack, easy, because all the inflammation goes away. But for me, it's always been epiphanies. It's always been mental. Like when my body rids itself of food for a while, you know, I still continue to take Afro D, but everything else I, I, I avoid and I, I drink, drink coffee. Uh, like I get these epiphanies, these ultra magical thoughts that are more in the body, in the soul, like in, in, in my like dancing Farhan, uh, that I don't get when I eat. So for me, it's very mental. It's when I want to take a break from my thoughts, I do an extended fast. It's like a trick. It's just like a quick trick for me. Um, now, Seneca, who is the greatest influence on Tim Ferriss, did these 10 day fasts where, you know, it, it, he, has a, he has a chapter in his book that the um, Letters to a Stoic, I think it's like chapter 14 or 18, I don't remember. But in that chapter, it's called Fasting and Festivities. Seneca would fast for 10 days during the festivities. When the people were partying, he would fast for 10 days. So Seneca was, you know, he was the richest man in the Roman Empire, richer than the emperor. Uh, and the emperor had him executed, commit suicide, uh, because he got so powerful. So, um, you know, fasting is no joke. Be smart. Okay. Now, of course, it gives your digestive system more time to relax, more time to detox. That's one. Um, it's a natural way to live. I covered it. Um, it is also a very, very good way to lower insulin levels. If you're, if you're insulin resistant, you have this problem, diabetes. I mean, look at a guy like Jason Fung. Jason Fung is a nephrologist in Toronto. He's a kidney doctor. And now all he does is focus on the keto diet, extended fasting, intermittent fasting, and uh, diabetes research. That's what he's been doing for the last 20 years. He's very world-renowned. He's written like four New York best-selling books, or best-selling books. Jason Fung, when a, when a patient comes in his clinic and says, I'm insulin resistant, I have a problem, I have diabetes, he's like, go on a five-day fast, motherfucker. Go on a five-day fast today, right now. Go on a five-day fast, right now, go on a five-day fast. And that's why, the reason is because you want your insulin levels to come down. You want your insulin system to get reset. It's, 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 just, it's hard to say these things, because they're not so scientific, but it's, you're essentially resetting that system because now your insulin goes way down. You're in ketosis, you know, natural ketosis, not keto diet, natural ketosis. And, and, and yeah, and once you reset your system, that is, the way, the first step to curing diabetes, to curing high blood sugar, and, and this is what Jason Fung recommends. And, and another thing I wanna cover is autophagy. So if you wanna decrease inflammation, you wanna increase your antioxidant profile, you wanna get rid of all those inflammatory markers, autophagy is the way to do it. What does that mean? So, and obviously this is very important for fat loss. Autophagy is a way, auto is self, Phagy is eating, like phagocytes are fa cells which eat cells, right? Phagocytes. 
Now, autophagy is when a cell eats itself or it destroys itself. It's programmed cell death. It, 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 it's you know, apoptosis, it's called, programmed cell death. There's a system inside the cell that allows the cell to eat itself or to destroy itself. And autophagy happens in fat cells when you fast. So this is one way to think about intermittent fasting. Uh, lipolysis, you know, met metabolic breakdown of fat cells through hydrolysis to form fatty acids and glycerol. This will happen, th this is one of the health benefits with intermittent fasting. Now, what the fuck is growth hormone? Okay, uh, traditionally growth hormone was always used as to treat height deficiency in children. And a lot of children, like Lionel Matt Messi, right, the, the great football player, the best football player ever, he got a huge shot of growth hormone when he was a kid. That's why you see these big fat legs that he has. He's a short guy. So his parents treated him with growth hormone uh, when he was a kid and he developed these huge legs. That was all growth hormone. Guys on juice since he was a kid because he was so short. So they thought he was not gonna grow well and he grew too well and now he's the best football player ever. So it's not natural. Messi's on juice. Uh, growth hormone is a peptide hormone. It's a somatotrope and it's made by somatotrope cells inside the adenohypophysis. So that's the anterior pituitary gland. You remember the pituitary gland, it also releases LH, it's also a process uh, through tes how testosterone is produced, so growth hormone is produced a very similar way. Uh, and li like I said, huge factor in growth and development. Uh, it also stimulates IGF-1 in the, in the liver, okay? Uh, this is how you grow muscle. Uh, there is an increase in skeletal muscle weight. We know this cross-sectional area of muscle mass. This is all mediated when growth hormone targets the IGF receptor and binds to the IGF receptor. This is how you get muscle mass. This is what growth hormone's all about. So physical performance, strength, these are all related to growth hormone. Now, how does growth hormone and testosterone relate to each other? Well, sev several studies, let me talk about a couple of them. One study was actually done very recently in 2018 in the, in the journal Endocrine Connections. There they showed that mice who suffer from micropenis, right, small penis, probably like this small, uh, when they take testosterone and growth hormone together, they grow a normal penis. Penis becomes average, but on their own, growth hormone and testosterone don't do the trick. So you need to take them together. So this is one thing about um, uh, uh, micropenis syndrome in, in rats. And when you look at recovery, muscle recovery is done best with testosterone and growth hormone together. There's a synergistic influence on, of these two hormones. If you have testosterone by itself, growth hormone by itself, muscles don't recover as fast. So this is another study that, was, uh, that showed this. Now, <laughs> what does science say about intermittent fasting and growth hormone and how it relates to testosterone? Nothing, N really nothing. I mean, I told you a lot of information about these three things, but together, not really. Don't do intermittent fasting to increase testosterone, please. Do it because you want to uh, lose fat. Do it because you want to feel lean, you want to feel good. You don't want to put so much stress on your body, eating all day, you want to give yourself a break. You want to be mentally alert, mentally focused during the mornings. That's why you should do intermittent fasting, for that focus, that energy. Um, yeah, and, and of course, it maintains muscle, it induces fat loss. Um, dude, even when you look at Ramadan studies, like, you know, when m Muslims, like we, I mean, I'm, an, I'm a Muslim, when we do Ramadan, I don't personally do it, but when they do Ramadan, there's actually a decrease in sexual desire, a decrease in sexual appetite, a decrease in testosterone, essentially, during Ramadan. I mean, obviously, they're not drinking water either. Um, but, you know, don't think of it like, oh, it's, I'm going to do it because it increases my testosterone. It doesn't. Okay, it doesn't, sorry. Uh, exposed, myth exposed. Uh, body composition will be better. Um, yeah, and, and obviously a lot of members in the Afri Academy do intermittent fasting. I've been doing it for four years and I mean, it's just the culture for us. So that's something to keep in mind. And if you wanna learn more about intermittent fasting, about testosterone, naturally increasing it, all the free stuff is down in the description below. Just click the links, get all the free books, Amazon bestsellers. People paid hundreds of dollars for that stuff. I'm just giving it to you for free. Go increase your testosterone. Um, 
you want to learn more about Afro D, about what we do in the academy, about all the transformations, again, link below. Go learn, man. Have fun. Uh, try intermittent fasting. If you've never done it, just try it. Like, it's not going to hurt you. Um, do it for 30 days. See how you feel. Do it 16-8 to start with. Uh, don't worry. You're not going to lose muscle. Nothing's going to happen. You're not going to die. You're going to be okay. You can fast for 10 days. You're not going to die. Uh, just do it slowly. Don't do anything crazy. I know Seaman in our academy, he did 10 days. He's never done more than two, two days, I think, and then he just did 10 days. But he's also a Viking and crazy motherfucker. Um, yeah. Love you, man. See you soon.